Good evening and welcome to my laboratory. What you're looking at here is the Partsman by Filer transformer coil and uh, its uh, little uh, coupling transformer that I will be using to hook up to the function generator for these leads. So this isolates the function generator from the coil itself. This is the input here, this is the current viewing resistor, this is the other end of the input. Um, these are the four 4.7 ohm precision uh, non-inductive current or non-inductive load resistors across the blue winding. The red winding is the input winding and you can see that one end of it is, uh, is open there. Nothing connected to it. And uh, this is sandwiched together using a wooden or a wooden spacer and a plastic bolt with a monofiler pickup coil that's got its two ends there. And that's the setup. I've got a hole drilled in my little chopping board here so that I can set the thing down and uh, in the hole and not have it move around once I get the probes hooked up. Okay, now I'm going to hook it up. Stand by. Okay, so here's the setup. Here's the main Hartsman by Filer transformer coil. Here are the scope probes. There's the uh, channel three probe hooked on the high side of the non-inductive load resistor 18.8 ohms precision load resistor here's the channel two probe hooked on the high side of the 1.00 ohm non-inductive precision uh, current viewing resistor back over here is the channel 1 probe that's hooked to the input this red jumper lead over here to the what I'm calling the red winding dotted end of the bifiler partsman transformer the non dotted end is just open of the red winding the blue winding is the output winding, and that's going to the um, stack of four each 4.7 ohm precision non-inductive load resistors, and that's then in series with the input current viewing resistor. And then here are the scope probe reference leads and the other output of the coupling transformer. I'm using this little toroidal transformer to couple the function generator output to the input of the system. Okay, so the function generator is effectively ground isolated, galvanically isolated from the, uh, the system. Okay. And uh, on the bi or I'm sorry, monofiler uh, secondary, I guess you would call it there, the bottom coil in the pancake stack, I've got a little LED resistor connected as a slight load. Okay. And uh, function generator is producing a sine wave at uh, 1.44 megahertz there and there's the live scope view and here, whoops, sorry about the focus here are the parameters that we're interested in the period RMS voltage that's the period, that's the RMS voltage calculated across one full period of the yellow trace is uh, 1.41 volts RMS, that's the input voltage. 
the period RMS of the channel 2, the input current, is 14.8 uh, milliamps RMS or 0 0.0148 amps RMS. The phase difference between 1 and 2, current and voltage, or rather voltage and current, is uh, fluctuating, but it's between minus 77 and minus 81 degrees. And the math on the trace, on the scope here, is calculating the, um, oops, sorry, channel 1 times channel 2. So the voltage, instantaneous voltage times instantaneous current, and that gives us the uh, average input power, which is 4.3 to 4.4 .4 milliwatts. And then the output voltage, this is the voltage across the 18.1, or I'm sorry, 18.8 plus 1.0 resistors, 19.8 resistors, is uh, 500 millivolts RMS. Okay. So, now let's do some calculation. Stand by. Okay, now I'm going to do a calculation from the values shown on the scope. If I can get it to focus. Uh, channel 1 input voltage 1.41 volts RMS for, the, for one period. Channel 2 input current 14.8 milliamps or 0 0.0148 amps RMS for one period. The phase angle between voltage and current is minus 78.85, which means that the current is leading the voltage here. The average power calculated, input power calculated by the scope using instantaneous multiplication of CH1, channel 1 and channel 2, is uh, 4.36 milliwatts and the output voltage across the 19.8 ohm load is 501 millivolts for uh, RMS for one period of the 14.4 14.44 megahertz uh, signal. Okay, so I'm not going to make you watch me punch keys on the calculator. I very cleverly have uh, already done it here. Let's see if I can get this in focus. Sorry about the light. Okay, so uh, power in, instantaneous power in, no matter what the uh, waveform or current or, or uh, phase lag is, is channel 1 times channel 2 instantaneous measurements. Or, if you have pure sine waves, it's uh, the RMS voltage times the RMS current times the cosine of the phase angle, right? That's the two ways of calculating input. Uh, one, the instantaneous calculation that the scope does doesn't, uh, the, the waveforms don't matter, that's always right. If you have pure sine waves, then you, uh, then the sine wave formula works to give you the power in. Power out is the voltage across the load, RMS, squared, divided by the resistance of the load in ohms. So that's P is equal to V squared over R. That's just Ohm's law. Okay, so now the numbers. We're running at uh, 1.440 megahertz. The phase angle 
measured by the scope is minus 78.85 current leading voltage the load resistance is the 18.8 ohms um, non-inductive precision current viewing resistors directly across the the uh, output coil and the plus the 1.00 ohm current viewing resistor which is also included in the RL calculation here okay so because the uh, the, the voltage that I'm measuring is across both of those resistors there. Okay, so the input power then, the average of the math trace, which is the instantaneous multiplication of channel 1 by channel 2, gives 4.36 milliwatts. And now if we assume pure sine waves, we do uh, 1.41 volts RMS times 0 0.0148 amps RMS times the cosine of minus 78.85 uh, degrees and that comes out to uh, 0 0.004035 watts or 4.04 milliwatts. Okay, so the difference between the 4.36 milliwatts and the 4.04 milliwatts is telling us that the, the um, sine wave calculation, the assumption of having sine waves is not, is not completely true. There's a little bit of distortion there. So we can use the larger of these values, 4.36 milliwatts, as our um, correct input power. Okay, now the output power is the, the voltage squared, the RMS voltage squared across the load divided by the load Okay, so we have um, 0.501 volts RMS, square that, and then divide that by 19.8 ohms, and you come out with 0 0.01268 watts, or 12.7 milliwatts. That's output power dissipated in the loads, load resistors. Input power is 4.36 milliwatts, and that gives us a COP calculation of 2.9monofiler pickup coil in this stack and the um, input power in the live trace right now is about 4.7 milliwatts it's fluctuating but about 4.7 milliwatts okay now I'm going to disconnect the LED and you can see that the input power went up no, and you know, there's the LED disconnected there. Right. Now I'm going to reconnect the LED, and the input power went back down. Disconnecting the LED. Input power goes up, reconnecting the LED, input power goes down. Okay, 